Okay, so the next step is tracing it. So we have, we have our triangle with our name outlined in Sharpie. So I'm going to be using a light box, but I know that you don't have a light box. So what you can do is you're going to place your paper up against a computer screen. So like imagine that this is a computer screen and just make sure that you have it on a white screen. See, there's a light behind it. That's why it's called the light box. You can also imagine that this is a window. So you can't do this at night unless there's a bright light on the other side of that window. So I have my name traced out. Our original folding, we folded it three times. So now I'm going to unfold it twice. So one and two. I'm going to flip it over. You saw me flip it over. So let me do that again because that seems to be a problem. Uh, a lot of people are getting tripped up at that step. So remember we had our square. We folded it into one triangle. We folded it into another triangle. We folded it one more time into this triangle. Okay, we also, remember I told you, use your Sharpie or the edge of your scissors to squash those folds flat. All right. We now have it like this. So we folded it three times. We're going to unfold it twice. So one, two. I'm going to turn it over so I can see my name. So even if you happen to have your name somewhere here, that's okay. It will still work out. You just have to have faith that it's going to work out. So I am going to turn my triangle over and because of the light source behind what I'm putting my paper on, I can see my name because I traced it in Sharpie. So now I'm going to trace it again in pencil and you may think, well, I already see it. I can trace it in Sharpie. No, trace it in pencil first because there's still the potential to make mistakes. Now you may trace it in Sharpie. Once you have traced it in pencil, now notice when you turn it over, you can see your name, right? It, it looks like your name. You can see that it says you know, you can read your name. It will be backwards on the other side of the paper because we traced it backwards. So it is supposed to look funny. You're not really supposed to be able to read your name unless you're good at reading backwards, and some people are. So I'm going to move my light table so that I don't draw on it. I'm going to trace this in Sharpie. Make sure that you protect your dry, uh, drawing or writing surface. Okay, I have finished tracing it in Sharpie. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put back my light table. I'm going to open it up completely into our original square. So you see that one square out of four quadrants has your name forwards and backwards. So pay attention carefully. I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to fold it in half like a rectangle. may need to squash your folds again. So I have one side does not have my name. The other one has my name regular backwards and upside down. 
So now I'm going to take it, I'm going to turn it over, and because I did it in Sharpie, I can see my name. So now I'm going to trace it again in pencil first, and this time I can now do one continuous line. We are not drawing the tops or the bottoms of our names, just the side lines. That's why we are doing bubble or block letters. See, so it's continuous. I didn't draw that line there. See, that's why we do it with pencil first, just in case. I didn't quite see that. I didn't have it on the light, so I needed to correct that. So continue tracing this. I'm finished with my pencil, so now I'm going to trace it in Sharpie. Again, make sure you're not drawing on a surface you shouldn't be drawing on. Okay, I've finished that one. So I have both sides done now. So I'm going to open it up and we can start to see how it's connecting. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna finish connecting my lines here where they didn't quite connect. There we go. So now I'm going to fold it in half again with all of my Sharpie on one side my name in Sharpie on one side and blank on the other. So then I'm gonna go back to my light source. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to trace it again with pencil first and then Sharpie. Okay, now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna check to make sure that I didn't forget any of the spaces in the R's or the A's. Nope, I'm good. I'm going to, I don't need my light table anymore. I'm turning it off, putting it away. I'm going to trace with Sharpie. And for this, go ahead and open it up all together so that you can see to make sure that you are make, making it nice and balanced. Remember, that is our focus for this week, is radial balance. Okay, now that I'm finished with this, I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to erase all of the pencil shavings. All right, make sure that you erase, not the pencil shavings, all of the pencil marks. Make sure you clean this up real nice and neat. And also check to make sure you didn't miss any spots like I did here, or else you're going to end up erasing them. So double check again that you have all the insides of the letters. All right, 
Make sure everything is connected across your lines here. And erase your pencil marks so we can get it ready for coloring with colored pencil. Okay, so now we've come to the come to the coloring section, which means we're going to do either colored pencil or crayon. No marker, no paint or water watercolors because we haven't practiced blending those and you may not have access to those. Even if you do, uh, I'd like to kind of even the playing field for everybody, all right? I know that for your other classes, you, you have like regular colored pencils or crayons. So we're gonna keep it to that. And to make things even simpler, we're only doing two colors per section. So that doesn't mean that we're going to do two colors for the entire thing. All right, so our focus for the week is radial blend or radial balance, right? So if we cut this up into pieces, we have triangles that have the exact same thing, but we had other focuses, right? So, well, our main focus was radial balance. What we're gonna be focusing on now is uh, like repetition and pattern but also like value, so shading and blending of the colored pencils. So for each section, I want you to pick two colors, all right, just to, just to keep it simple. All right, if you wanna take it beyond that, that's, that's up to you, but the minimum requirement is two colors. So I'll choose, um, maybe not brown, let's see. Let me choose orange and yellow. Kind of make this look like a sunburst or something. So I'm going to sharpen my colored pencil real quick. All right. And I'm not going to be sloppy. I'm not going to just like scribble across. I'm going to take my time towards the center. I'm going to press hard with the colored pencil. And from all the folding, we've kind of worn out the center, so just be careful. It might tear on you. If it does, go ahead and um, like put a piece of tape on the back. So as I move out, because I'm like I said, I, I wanted to make this look kind of like a sunburst. As I move out from the circle, I'm not going to press as hard with my pencil. But for the most part, I want you to try to practice and make your transition between colors as smooth as possible. So those are my colors for that one. So now I'm going to move to the next one, which is my E, but you really can't tell it's an E. Kind of remind, makes me think of like some kind of weird fantasy medieval weapon. Um, so for that... Maybe I will do, I'll do two kinds of blue or, yeah. So I have a blue violet and a true blue. So I'm gonna figure out how I wanna do this pattern. So I think and as long as you get them to blend into each other is really the point and the practice. All right, so I did this point. Now I'm gonna do this point in the blue-violet. And again, I'm making circular motions rather than like straight lines. Because when you color, you know, using a circular motion, it makes it easier to blend your colors. 
And this goes for crayon as well, as long as you're not pressing too hard with the crayons. All right, so I'm done with this next section. So now all of these little spaces here are going to get two more different colors. And I'm gonna straighten this out. This didn't quite match up here. There we go. So I'm gonna pick two, two more colors. So each section so like the outside of the, the E, or technically the space in between the E and the R, is going to get two more colors blended together. Then the R will get two different colors blended together. Alright, so as long as you don't do the same colors next to each other, so don't do like, you know, blues next to blues, next to blues, next to blues. Alright, switch off so that it's like the color change is obvious. Alright, and you're going to do that for the rest of your letters and the negative space in between the letters. All right, so go ahead and keep watching so that you see what I mean. You can follow along and pause the video when you need to.